Ships ahoy in the Yerubadala this morning with a last-minute cruise ship visit to Batemans Bay today. The arrival of Seaborne Encore has the mayor dockside and rolling out the welcome mat, but still able to take our call for our first chat in what will be a very interesting 2019. So good morning to Councillor Liz Innes. Morning, Simon, and um, welcome to 2019. It will be an incredibly interesting year, won't it? I think so. A couple of election, elections are uh, heading our way. Really? Do you think so? <laughs> <laughs> you might have noticed. Uh, so what's happening there at Dockside this morning? Oh, look, Simon, let me paint you a little bit of a picture. Um, you know, obviously everybody knows we had a fair dumping of rain last night, but here this morning in the bay, it is absolutely dynamic. We've got this magnificent cruise ship out in the bay. We've got beautiful visitors coming in in their tender and being, um, you know, offloaded right into the centre of town, which is just such an exciting thing for them. They're going and doing all sorts of wonderful things today that, um, you know, I just spoke to a couple of lovely guys from Denver in Colorado and they were going off to have a, a round of golf at the Catalina Club there and there's some people that set off on a lovely walking tour. We've got all our beautiful um, representatives here and ambassadors here to welcome them. You know, it's just a beautiful sight, Simon. It's absolutely beautiful. Excellent. Well, we can only avoid talking politics for so long, as you say. Uh, it's <laughs> going to be an interesting year, particularly, I guess, well-placed for Gilmore being a marginal, marginal seat. Is that... must be welcome for you? Oh, look, Simon, you know... In any focus that we can get on our local areas, we're absolutely going to welcome that because, you know, we we kind of sometimes feel a little bit neglected down the end of Gilmore, but, you know, let's wait and see what some of these candidates, you know, come out with the election promises for us. And, you know, here at Yerubadala Shire, we are absolutely ready and willing to, you know, make them aware of the things that are priorities for our local community and work with them in any way that we can. And you've already had a long time to get to know Fiona Phillips, but do you, have you met, uh, what do you know about Warren Mundine? I haven't met with Warren yet. Um, I'm planning to meet with him, I think, in next week. I think we're booked in for a, a, our first meeting. So, you know, Simon, look, I... I believe that anybody that puts their hand up that shows that they really do want to care and want to stand up for their local areas, um, you know, I am always going to be willing to talk to anybody. Uh, it doesn't matter what side of politics that they are from. I think that, you know, by and large, everybody comes into it with the best of intentions. So I guess from, you know, my perspective as Mayor of the Year of Bedella, I'm just ready and willing to work with anyone and whoever um, is, you know, prepared to come and talk to us. Our doors open. Excellent. Now, uh, there's a bit of political argument over the Yurubadala's rural lands strategy with Labor's candidate for the state seat of Bega saying that the uh, ALP will basically throw out the strategy if it wins government. What's your response to that? Well, Simon, it comes as no surprise to anybody. You know, our local community has worked for eight years to come up with this strategy. So my reaction to that is one of absolute disappointment. Um, and I'm disappointed, Simon, because you know, as I just said to you, I'm, my door is always open. I'm willing to talk to anybody. And what I'm really disappointed about is that the Labor candidate, before making that announcement, didn't even have the courtesy to come and talk to us about that. And I'm disappointed about that. And I'm also disappointed that Mike Daly was in Maruya yesterday and didn't spend half an hour, an hour, to come over to our, our office at Yerubadala Shire Council and talk to us about just how much work has gone into this rural land strategy. And for them to politicise it in this way, I find is really disappointing. But saying that, Simon, as I said, my door's open. I'm willing to work with anybody. Uh, which is what Yerubadala is doing. We are working through with those agencies on issues. It, at, it is at the... It is sitting with the Minister currently. So, you know, it'll be what it'll be. And did the opposition leader's office let you know that uh, he was going to be in town with Bill Shorten? No, not at all. And I think that's pretty discourteous, to be honest with you. But, you know, we'll overlook that and hopefully they'll rectify that and they'll come and have a bit of a chat to us about you know, some of the things as that council sees as priority. Of course, uh, the critics of the rural land strategy would point out that it's not just politicians, it's government departments that have raised uh, issues with it and, and asked for it to be, to be rewritten. Look, they haven't asked for it to be rewritten, Simon. They've asked for some... They've, they've had disagreement on some elements. 
Um, and look, you know, that's no surprise. They were at the t some of those agencies were at the table with us for five years. We knew what their concerns were. We addressed all of those through the processes, um, and it will still probably be a sticking point going forward. The uh, minister is going to have to make a determination and, and a decision on that, uh, particularly where we have some. And they're not major sticking points, Simon. You know, there's been a lot of brouhaha made out of, you know, that it's, they want it torn up and they're saying just don't do it and whatever. It's not. It's on certain elements of it and I am absolutely confident that we'll work through those issues and that their issues will be addressed. And this wonderful strategy that our community has worked Tens of thousands of hours have gone into this strategy from our rural community and the wider community. So everybody's had a chance to have their say. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm confident that at the end of the day, the strategy that we have in place will go through. OK. And in other developments over, some of the consultation process is underway for the Mackay Park Cultural Centre. Three options for people to respond to. Is there good engagement with the project at this stage? Oh, look, it's been fantastic, Simon. And, you know, there again, we'll just be up front. There have been a group in our community that are, you know, have a wish list to have a 50 metre pool included in that facility. But most of the people that we go and talk to, you know, in our community say, all right, if you're not losing your 50 metre pool, you're gaining all these other wonderful elements. And once those things are explained to them, uh, then a lot of them are very satisfied. They're also starting to give us back some really genuine good feedback, and, you know, on the details. And that's been incredibly um, positive, and we're going to continue to work with them. Over the last, the, the, um, last few weeks, we've been having drop-in kiosk sessions uh, in one of our local centres here in Batemans Bay. Uh, and that gives the community an opportunity to come along and just really have a good look, ask their questions and give us their feedback. And then over the last couple of days, we've had focus groups working with the architects to really start to drill down on some of the details. So, you know, I can't wait to see what the report looks like that comes back to council and the next step that will come back sometime in March, I believe. OK, and at this stage of those three options, is there one that stands out as the, the pragmatic choice for Council or is that what that report is, is about? Well, that's what the report would be about. And we, we said right at the start there were three different options, but we knew that um, realistically the final um, design would most likely be a hybrid of all of the three. So, you know, that's the process that we'll go through. Um, we'll talk with our community as we have done. Uh, we'll get some of that really good detailed information back. Um, you know, one of the things, for example, is people are telling us loud and clear that they love the mini golf aspect that still is uh, currently on site there. Uh, he'll have to go, obviously, during construction, but there's been a very clear message that people would like to see him reinstated back into the complex, if at all possible. So they're the kind of good positive feedback that we're getting. And Councillor Liz Innes, some very exciting, uh, a very exciting event for the calendar on the 22nd of yeah. February, the opening of the new exhibition centre. Oh, the Baz. And Simon, it's just going to be so exciting. So Mr Basil Sellers, who, you know, has been such a wonderful philanthropic um, donator towards the Baz, came down just last week to have a look at the progress of it. And, you know, when, when I got to meet him, he was just bubbling over with enthusiasm. He was so excited about, you know, what we have been able to achieve down at Maruya there. And it is going to be not just a regional gallery, but a, you know, an absolutely vibrant, beautiful space for, you know, arts, for, you know, there might be different cultural things go on there. It's just going to be incredible. So, you know, Simon, here's an invitation. If you can make it up on the 22nd, please come along and have a look. Formal wear? Well, I think so. I'm going to I'm going to take the opportunity to, you know, put a bit of a frock on and stiffy up a little bit. So I would say yes. Okay. The opening of the uh, Basil Sellers Exhibition Centre and the announcement of the Basil Sellers Art Prize winners all on the same night. Councillor, oh, it's going to be fantastic. Yep. Thank you so much. No trouble at all, Simon. And um, it's lovely to talk to you again. 
and I wish all your listeners, you know, it's going to be a fantastic year this year, but um, hold on to your hats as far as the politics goes. It might get a little bit bumpy. Absolutely. <laughs> Councillor Liz Innes there, keeping an eye on political and sea conditions as she welcomes those cruise ship passengers.